All software developers know that coding is definitely not the easiest profession. There are a lot of different pain points that we have to deal with on a daily basis, and sometimes there are just things that we don't know how to do, and we have to spend a lot of time researching how to do these things just to accomplish one task that we might not ever have to do again. Now luckily, AI can solve a lot of these problems. Now that's not really a surprise to a lot of you. It's all over the news, all the different tools out there, hearing about how much GPT can do and then all these other competitors that are coming up, not a big surprise. But what I wanna show you guys today is some of the tools that are out there, some that you might not even have heard of, that could really help you in your software development journey, save you a ton of time so that you can create the things that actually matter to you, not be focused on the small things, the details that are annoying and kind of low leverage. They're not actually getting you towards your end product very quickly. And so I'm gonna go through five different tools today. Some of them you might have heard of, some of them you might not. And I'm gonna to try to be very clear on explaining why you might be using some over the others. A lot of it comes down to preference. Like for example, a lot of these AI coding assistants will give you suggestions automatically as you're typing. It'll like fill in lines of code for you. Others, you have to manually request it and different people are gonna prefer different things. So that's why I think it's really valuable to actually look at a lot of the different tools out there and then make your choice as to which one you're gonna use instead of just going for the first one that you can find. So let's get into number one. So I wanted to start off right off the bat with the one that probably almost everybody has heard of at this point, and that is GitHub Copilot. This is by far the most popular AI programming assistant tool, but I don't just include this here as my first option to be cliche. It seriously is a powerful tool for helping you with any kind of software development that you might wanna do. Also, looking at the pricing right here, it's $10 a month per user, or if you're doing Copilot for business, you can see that it's $19 per user per month. So it's really affordable and it's extremely powerful. So I'll show a couple of examples. All right, so th this example is showing how to use GitHub Copilot to create code for fetching a cryptocurrency price. You can see that GitHub Copilot actually knows about the coin market cap API, and it uses that to get the price of a cryptocurrency. And if you look at one of the last lines there, when it gets back to that in the animation, it actually understands the response that comes from the API and how to actually key off of the data that it gets from the response to get the USD price of the cryptocurrency. Super cool stuff. For example here is using GitHub Copilot to build a tic-tac-toe game. All you have to do is say, here's tic-tac-toe, and then boom, all of a sudden it just generates all of this code for a game. Like 64 lines of code is really impressive from just a single line for a prompt. If you look at it, the prompt itself is really just the name of the function itself. And then I guess maybe you would include the comment at the top in line two right here when they write that. But like seriously, super simple prompt, spits out all this code for you. Think of the many different ways that you could use this. One big way that you could use GitHub Copilot and really any of these tools is to write tests for you. Because as a software developer, I can tell you, and a lot of you guys I'm sure agree with me that writing tests for your code is one of the most tedious things and often makes you feel like you're not really actually working towards the end goal of the software that you're trying to make because you're validating all these different things that you're usually pretty confident work already anyway. And so yeah, there's just so many things you could do. So yeah, one more example that we'll go through. All right, so this next one is using GitHub Copilot to unzip a file which is a pretty simple task, but you can see how it leverages all these different Python libraries, and then it has all these different functions. This is a good example to show how GitHub Copilot actually understands like good structure for programming. It doesn't just spit out random stuff or just use whatever libraries it wants. Like it's actually is using a lot of really powerful libraries here that I've used for a lot of my coding with Python and working with the file system. And then also that it creates different functions to segregate the different tasks that you have so that your code is modular, easy to read, and easy to test. All right, the next one on my list, which is probably the second most popular out of all five on my list, is Tab9. So Tab9 is pretty similar to GitHub Copilot, as in they're both pretty popular, they're both reasonably affordable, and they both do a lot of filling in a ton of code for you at the same time. So they really take the wheel compared to a lot of the different assistants, some that I'll show here in a second, where you give it a small prompt and then it really starts like filling in multiple lines for you, which some people might like that, some might not. It also might depend on the task that you're trying to do, but something like tab nine is really powerful when you know what you wanna create, but you really don't know the syntax for it. And so you just want it to like just go and just write a ton of code for you when you're giving it just a couple of lines for your prompts. 
super cool stuff. I would say that this is definitely one of my favorites, tab nine. Something that like if I were to start using AI for creating my code, which I'm looking at doing pretty soon here, this is one of them that I would definitely pick. So just to give an example of tab nine here, we have it creating a blog scheme. So this is actually like working with a database. So giving a, an example of doing that. And the animation is a little slow here, but you can see that tab nine, it really does most of the work for you in the situation. Like where you say you want a blog schema and it determines all the syntax and it actually gives you the attributes for the schema. So the user in this case isn't even saying what they want the schema to be. That's all being determined based off of the name of the schema, which is blog schema. So it decided that it wants a title, a slug and an excerpt. And then it starts creating helper functions for you, like being able to find one from the schema, being able to remove from the schema. And so in the end, the user isn't actually doing much coding here besides saying they want a database schema for a blog. And then tab nine is doing the rest. Super powerful stuff. And then the next one on my list is mutable.ai. Now this one is not as well known. I've never really heard of it until recently when I was doing a lot of research on these different tools. But the cool thing about mutable.ai is instead of it just being like a general purpose, use AI for any kind of coding, they actually have a couple of specific features that they really want to help you with. And I'll go over those in a second here. But another cool thing that I can talk about now before I get into a couple of examples is that you can use mutable.ai completely for free for manual suggestions. And what I mean by manual suggestions is when you're in your code and you're writing a couple of lines and then you want to do an autocomplete or to provide suggestions, whatever it might be, you actually have to like use a keyboard shortcut to then interact with the AI, which can be a good thing. Like sometimes you don't want the AI to just be spitting out suggestions all the time. You want to be able to just call on it to interact with it and then otherwise just do your regular code. So that can be a good thing. And then if you do the paid version of mutable.ai, then you have automatic suggestions as well. So it'd be more like tab nine and GitHub Copilot and those examples I showed earlier where you just start typing something and then you have those great outlines of all the suggestions from the AI. And then you usually hit like tab or space, enter or something to actually use that suggestion. Super cool stuff. And then, yeah, we can actually get into some of the specifics of mutable.ai that I mentioned. So one is the autocomplete, and this is more of the general purpose. So I won't spend too much time on this, but you can manually invoke the AI using like the default shortcut of control plus or whatever you might set. And it looks like here that you highlight the text and then it'll do something with that as a prompt, like with chat GPT, where you just give it a prompt, then it does something here. You highlight part of your code and that is the prompt. One thing that I thought was really cool is it specifically has features for adding documentation to your code. So this is where it gets more into the specifics that I was talking about, where it isn't just an, a general AI that helps you with any kind of code. You can use it specifically for adding documentation, which is a super cool thing because like testing and software development, adding documentation is necessary. It's often is vital, but it's annoying. It's tedious and like testing, it doesn't always feel like you're really working towards your end goal of your product, your software that you're building when you're spending hours and hours adding documentation for the readability of your code. Super cool stuff. So Sapphire AI is the fourth, second to last one on my list here. And this one is totally free right now, which is super cool. So at first I was going through the big ones like GitHub Copilot and Tab9 that cost money. They have a big team behind them. They've been going on for a while. This one's newer. It's free and it's still pretty powerful. And just like with mutable.ai, the one that I went through previously, this one is all based around manual asks for help. And so you actually have to invoke the AI to help you with your code, which is a good thing sometimes, like I said. And so I have an example of this one here. And so here's an example of using Safra.ai to help with creating a template for Next.js to just get started with the Next.js application. And so you can see here that Safra.ai is actually a VS Code extension. And so if you don't like VS Code, this isn't necessarily the one for you, but I know a lot of software developers prefer using VS Code over any other IDE. This is a good option for sure, because being stuck to VS Code, like I said, isn't really limiting because a lot of us use it anyway. It's my go-to, the only one I use for most of my projects really. And so you can interact with it alongside your code 
yeah, really cool tool. And they're releasing a paid version soon, I think next month actually. And so they're really expanding into different tiers and probably adding more functionalities for those paid tiers as well. So a lot more to come for this one. I think this will be a really cool VS Code extension. All right, and then the last one on my list, I actually want to take this in a little bit of a different direction. This is TendWeb, which is specifically for AI-powered WordPress platform development. So everything else is more like in the IDE, you're creating your code for your custom web applications or smart contracts, whatever it might be. This one is for WordPress specifically. And a lot of people like me don't really like WordPress. Personally, I prefer to make my websites myself using tools like React, Next.js, things like Svelte and Vue, all those different frameworks to code things yourself with HTML, CS, and JavaScript. But WordPress, it has its place in the industry for sure, because it's the best way to get a website up and running as fast as possible. And so this tool, it helps you with that even more. WordPress is already quick for getting websites up, but this, it, it automates website building, hosting, and page speed boosters. And so everything you need for a website, WordPress does it fast. This does it even faster by building on top of WordPress. So here actually is an example of a website that was built with 10Web. And this legitimately looks like a pretty good website. There's a lot of white here. I feel like there's not as much vibrancy to this website. I'm like overall, it's a really clean website. It seems like 10Web can be used to make really robust websites here. And so overall, seems like a good tool. It's also free from what I can tell. I had to look into their pricing a little bit, but it looks super good. So yeah, we'll just go over one more example here with 10Web. All right, here's one more example of a website built with 10Web. This one looks really good. I like, I always like when websites have images that span the entire screen. And sometimes I actually struggle to do it with WordPress. Maybe it's just the templates I use back when I did WordPress. But yeah, this looks super good. Like honestly, this looks like a website that you would make with WordPress just yourself. So having AI doing it for you and spitting out something that looks like this, it's, it's pretty good. I feel like 10Web has a bit of room to improve. Like overall, there's not much pizzazz with the couple of websites that we looked at, but for getting something up and running quick, this seems like a really good option. And maybe you can improve on it after as well. But yeah, that's everything I got for the different tools you can use for your AI driven software development. There's a lot more out there. So I'd like to hear from you guys in the comments, what other tools have you experimented with for your AI driven software development? There's a lot more coming down the pipeline as well. So I'm sure there'd even be a place to do another video like this within the next year as a lot more tools come out or different ones become stronger. Things like Sapphire AI, it's brand new. It could be like the best tool for this kind of thing in the next few months. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. Like all this technology with GPT and all the competitors coming out, things like auto GPT as well. It just shows that we're on the base of the playing field here. And there's just so much that's going to be built on top in the next couple of months, even in a couple of years, especially. And so I'm excited to be playing with all these different things and seeing how it can help me in my software development journey as well. So thank you everybody for watching and I will see you in the next one.